Welcome back to another episode. Holes one, two, and three. Let me just spin around and show you this. There we are, hole three, hole two, hole one. Lots of stuff going on here, but the important thing that I wanna show you is this, this whole structure here. Now, what we've got is the hard top. Now, the hard top for the 1370, they have now finished that. So that is complete. And that is gonna be released from the mold in a few days. Now I'm gonna come back and film that for you, but what we've got here is this whole structure, absolutely huge carbon fiber. I will get the weights down there below or the predicted weight. It is absolutely insanely, insanely big. And it is probably the best indication of how much living space we're gonna get. When they demold this, I will be here to film all of that with you. I also want to take you through and show you our boats. Now, hull two, they've done some little bits of work. The work that they do is subtle. It is subtle and small, but nonetheless, it's important because all these small steps allow finalization of a product before they move into kind of fitting the other bit. This is the, the longer on of the 1370. We've had a lot of questions about this, this whole box and what it does and how it's all going to work. And this is pretty important. What this does, it allows us, and it is gonna allow us to kind of stow all the anchoring mechanism and all the gear. So obviously for anchoring a catamaran, you have to have a bridle system and the bridle attaches to either hull so that you kind of get stability and security while at anchor. So you're not stressing the gypsy out. That system has to be easily retractable and stowable. Now, if you go back to the videos we took on the 1260, you see that the system that they have on and on many other catamarans is a system where the bridle normally on the 1260 just hooks over the, the guard rail at the front of the boat now while that's a perfectly workable system it's not an attractive system and also there's a lot of clang banging around and it's not it's not an elegant solution and this is designed to make the solution more elegant so inside this box everything is going to kind of pull up there the bridle system all kind of like stows neatly in there the anchor has been designed to fit inside that box so the sarka anchor that goes with the dedicated bridle system and that will all stow neatly here we are ruby rose 2 a couple of things i want to point out to you something we talked about a lot is the weight the weight of these boats and everything is being weighed as it goes in which is super important let us just step onto the boat and I want to kind of address a few questions that we are asked a lot about the, the boat and Ruby Rose 2. Firstly, I'm going to deal with some complaints. Number one, complaint that has been leveled a few times. You're making the workers down tools and it's costing Seawind loads of money. They must be really pissed off with you being there. No, let me just address this for you. Firstly, the workers are all given three breaks a day. One is at 10 o'clock, one is at 12 o'clock and one is in the afternoon and we only film during the breaks because it's where they down tools. So that is it. We are trying to be as low impact as possible. There are odd occasions, like for instance, when we were filming in the woodworking shop where we had to kind of like interrupt their, their day because to see woodworking in action, you kind of need to have the workers there. So that's the first thing. The second point that kind of like we want to turn and really address here is kind of like how Seawind are giving us this access. Seawind are happy to give us access. It's, it's a, you know, we talk to them on a regular basis and I, I hope you enjoy the content that we're bringing you. So if you do have comments before we kind of jump down there, put them down below. Tell us what you'd like to see because again, our life in, as we've been here now four months, our life is kind of becoming more involved in the Ho, the Ho Chi Minh community, the Saigon community. So anything else you want to see, just tell us temporary steps. Let's go down and see exactly what's going on on Ruby Rose 2. This is the heads, the aft heads. Now, the last time you saw us here, there was a lot of work here that hadn't been complete. These this was all being tried in so the sections the try-in sections of the window the kind of these templates this was just loosely placed now we've got some bonding and again it's kind of like interesting to see and i hope you can kind of see that there that this is all now glassed in and solid we talk a lot about squeaks in catamarans how much noise they make and this you can hear that squeaking that is simply a piece of plywood that's been put there temporarily to kind of like cover the bilge but again it's about having things that don't rub against each other where you don't get friction no mentions of other brands here there is zero gap there no need for any any mastic we have a full bead of glass that's all 
now glassed in, pretty rigid. So we now have in our beautiful master cabin, that's all complete. And really what I would say to you is in the last week, what they have done is essentially prepare, finish off preparing our boat for the next stage of installation. So there's a lot, a lot going on here, but physically seeing big things happening, it's just, there's not a great deal to see. Now, let's get on and go and look at that hard top being unveiled, undemolded, because that is gonna be fascinating. And I do wanna try and talk to Danny and James about the weight of that. So let's go on and have a look at that. So welcome back to the Cat Lyre factory in Ho Chi Minh City. This, this is a carbon fiber hardtop, a massive piece of weight saving equipment for the 1370. And today they're actually gonna do a demolding. We haven't been able to get into the factory to kind of like at the time when a demolding is gonna occur. So this is the first one we're gonna see. Issues we have to deal with or they're gonna have to deal with. Number one, it's inverted. It's like a big pancake that needs to kind of be put onto a plate. So what the workers are doing now, what you can see is they're actually removing the protective coating to expose the carbon fiber. And that's been put in place just so that the carbon fiber wouldn't get damaged. So let's just set the scene over there. Forklift truck, huge long beam on it. That is gonna lift everything. Then we have behind us this side, carbon fiber coat roof. Now that is on a frame which is on the wheels, but they've also just off camera built a second frame and that is actually what's gonna support the whole unit. It's a pretty complex operation and this is the first one they've made in carbon fiber. So there's gonna be a little bit of trial and error, but between Danny and James, I have absolutely no, no doubt that this is gonna come across perfectly. So let's just wait, let's see what's gonna happen. But yeah, what we expect to see is a clean demold. That means that obviously they're not shaking it like trying to get like a like a, an omelet out of a pan where you per burnt the omelet. And so here we are with the whole process of demolding the carbon coach roof. Now what happens here, and this is actually the old factory, it's being done differently now because they've obviously got the overhead cranes, but in this situation, what they did is they actually bonded tags to four different parts of the carbon coach roof. And these tags allow straps to be added. And once those straps are added with Danny, obviously sexily, driving that uh, the, the forklift there they use an extendable arm just to lift the whole coach roof out of the mold danny is as always like the maestro in a, an orchestra supervising everything here and with the tags attached to hold the straps everything is very carefully lifted out of the mold and then by adjusting the straps, everything is turned over and put onto a custom bed so that they can actually keep it safe and free from damage. So the whole process took about an hour. As I said, now, because they have these overhead cranes in this fantastic new factory, everything is done slightly differently, but this was the procedure for our coach roof. So super interested to see. Thank you so much for Danny to letting us film. A very, very complicated operation. Great to actually have another part of the boat ready to be fitted. Now, what we've got here, 57 square meters of carbon fiber, 300 kilos. That is an insanely light piece of kit. So as I look to holes one, two, and then moving forward down in Kirsten, hole number three. There is a lot going on here. Hole four is now infused. So again, within the next couple of weeks, you will see this whole factory actually full. It's getting too full, more on that later. And now that we're gonna have those three constituent parts, the hull, the deck, and the hard top complete, it's now just a question of assembly. So over the coming weeks, things that you're gonna see on Ruby Rose 2, the assembly of hull number one, the deck going on, super excited to see that, and then followed by deck number two going on, then the hard top, and then you're gonna have essentially a completed boat. So engines in, hard top on, deck on, then we just go to fit out. And that is all going to occur really, really quickly. Now, in the two minutes that I've got left before the break ends and all these guys come back to work, if you enjoyed the episode, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. I am at the moment trying to work out kind of what, guy, what you guys want, what you want to see. And again, we're trying to get this balance between life in Ho Chi Minh and boat building as kind of like appealing to you as possible. 
but obviously some some of you want more boat building some of you want more life in Ho Chi Minh and a lot of you are kind of like well we don't care just show us what you can see anyway hope you enjoyed this either way give us a like give us a thumbs up feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already because you should have done and I will see you all again really soon goodbye <laughs>